Thank you for joining me today for WTLC's Tell Me More About video library series. This is a series of short videos providing brief introduction to common legal topics encountered by people who frequently seek assistance from WTLC. This video is for informational purposes only and does not constitute legal advice. If you'd like additional information, we recommend calling WTLC's 24-hour bilingual helpline at 877-531-5522 to get connected with a legal advocate who can provide more information regarding how you can best represent yourself throughout your legal process. If you need legal advice, representation, or other assistance, a legal advocate can help you locate organizations with licensed attorneys who may be able to assist you further. Feel free to stop the video at any time to write down the information presented here today, including valuable online resources. In today's video, we are going to discuss a domestic violence restraining order. Some common reasons for why someone would need a domestic violence restraining order or order of protection include domestic violence, harassment, stalking, someone disturbing the peace, or someone engaging in reproductive coercion, which consists of control over reproductive autonomy of another through force, threat of force, or intimidation. Also, abuse, such as child abuse, elderly abuse, or dependent adult abuse, which could also be in the lines of physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, or psychological abuse. Abuse can also come in the forms of written, verbal, or physical. If you are requesting a restraining order for yourself and believe that other family members or members of the household or your children are also in danger by the same person, you can request to add them as a protective person on your, on your restraining order or protective order. It is also good to note that the person seeking protection is called the petitioner and protected person if the restraining order is granted, while the other party is called the respondent or restrained person if the restraining order is granted. Typical restraining order provisions consist of a stay away order, which forbids the respondent to contact the petitioner. This can include staying away from the petitioner's home, workplace, or children's school, but not limited to. No, a no contact order, respondent cannot contact the petitioner or other protected parties requested on the restraining order. Peaceful contact order, respondent can only contact can only contact petitioner in regards to coordination of visitation purposes, such as scheduling or picking up or dropping off. A move out order, respondent needs to move out of the home if shared with the petitioner. Some types of restraining orders. Emergency protective order protects victims of abuse, serious harassment, or stalking. An emergency protective order is available within 24 hours a day from the police. A domestic violence restraining order protects individuals from, the, from family members, spouses, former spouses, parties that have a child together, or parties that have a current or past dating relationship. In regards to domestic violence restraining, temporary restraining orders. TROs can be valid for around three weeks or until a scheduled court hearing and may become permanent after a hearing. Anyone 12 years of age or older can apply for a domestic violence TRO without parental consent. It needs to be filed in a civil court, not criminal, and respondent must be served with the TRO before police can enforce the order. Only valid and enforceable until the date of the hearing. It needs to be filed in a civil court or family court. Regardless of whether or not a temporary restraining order is granted, please make sure the other party is properly served with the paperwork and plans to attend the future hearing date scheduled by the judge. The future hearing date is where the judge decides on the permanent restraining order. Domestic Violence Assistance Program is also available at the courthouse. Each, each courthouse in each county has, their, has one of their own. The one for Orange County is on the, located on the seventh floor of the Lamoureux Justice Center. 
and you can go there to get assistance with the paperwork and also have them review your restraining order paperwork as well. Another, you may, all, you may apply for a domestic violence restraining order if a person has abused you, threatened to abuse you, and you have one of the following relationships with that person. Married, divorced, separated, registered, domestic partnership, have a child together, dating, or used to date, live together, or used to live together, or you are related within the second degree, related by blood or marriage at the same at the second degree. This means mother or mother-in-law, father or father-in-law, child or stepchild or legally adopted child, grandparent, grandparent-in-law, child, grandchild, grandchild-in-law, sister or sister-in-law, brother or brother-in-law, step-parent, daughter, daughter-in-law, son, son-in-law. The in-law must be through a current marriage. Criminal protective order, an order issued by the court requested by the district attorney in a criminal case against the defendant. The order usually requires that the defendant have no contact with the victim and another witness of a crime, including a victim's ch children. A CPO may include a stay away order, no contact order, and a no non-abusive behavior order. Criminal protective orders take precedent over any other orders. Criminal protective orders may include protection of the children, but do not include custody. Judges can issue a CPO even if the victim is not present in court or does not want a protective order. The length of protection varies widely, usually it lasts as long as the court has jurisdiction over the case, which includes parole or probation time. Thank you again for joining us for this episode of WTLC's Tell Me More About video library series. Please contact WTLC's 24-hour bilingual helpline at 877-531-5522 in order to get connected with a legal advocate. WTLC's legal advocates are not attorneys and are not able to provide legal advice or representation, but can provide you with information and assistance as you explore your options regarding your rights as a parent. Thank you. Have a nice day.